Hello everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and welcome to another of my favorite arcade games, and that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. So as all of you know, I have played X-Men Arcade, I've played Simpsons Arcade, and I've even played the original Turtles Arcade game, but this time we're going to be playing Turtles in Time, the original arcade game, and I am joined by a very special guest this time. We'll be playing as Donatello, and that special guest is someone that I have mentioned in some of my previous videos. As we give ourselves some lives, and we watch April O'Neil here <laughs> react to Krang stealing the Statue of Liberty. Damn you, Shredder! You vile creature for stealing the Statue of Liberty. But I am joined by my cousin Bob. How's it going? That is Bob. And so we are playing as our two favorite turtles, although Bob, you're not a Donatello fan, right? No, Raphael is my turtle of choice, however, due to strategic purposes for this game, I chose uh, the brainier Donatello for his reach with his uh, staff, so that's why I am him. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we both chose the reach in this game as opposed to the speed or the gnarliness, I guess, of Michelangelo. That was his kind of trait. Not Michelangelo, Raphael. Oh, Did I yeah. say Michelangelo? No, you said Raphael, but I Raphael wasn't gnarly. He was quick-tempered. Yes. So anyway, uh, we're doing post-commentary. We, we recorded this earlier um, so that we could kind of focus on playing the game. It is kind of a, well, it's not a tough game, but, you know, it definitely requires a little bit of concentration. And obviously, it's a beat 'em up, so we wanted to be able to just play the game and enjoy it. And we had a good time with it. So now we're doing a little bit of post commentary, and you'll notice a few different things here. Uh, some of the stuff is the same as the other Turtles arcade game. Um, this is the GameCube version, um, which I got through Turtles 3 Mutant Nightmare or something like that. It's an unlockable, and watch out! <laughs> Krang shocking us. Took us a little while, or it took me a little while to get back into the hang of this game anyway. It's probably been uh, 15 years since I played it, maybe now. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, and we didn't really play the arcade game. I mean, we played the SNES version, which is a little bit different than the arcade game. Um, and so the music's different, the graphics are obviously better on this version. Um, but they changed some of the elements, so some of the bosses are different, and I think they actually added some stages to the SNES version, and we struggled with Baxter. Yeah, the first boss ended up being the toughest one. Not quite sure why. Well, we'll attribute it to Rust at this point. <laughs> yeah, and we hadn't quite got our strategy down of catching the boss in between us, so you'll notice that we're dying, and dying often, but yeah, we're, we'll, we'll get the hang of it as we as we play here and eventually get it. And you can do a kind of a super move with uh, pressing the jump and attack buttons at the same time. You'll do like a jump kick. <laughs> Damn hand. <laughs> yeah, he's like swatting us with his freaking gun there. I don't know what the hell's going on with it, but yeah. But fortunately, we have unlimited continues, so we can keep pumping virtual quarters into our, our game here. Probably spent about twenty dollars for the whole game if you're keeping track. If someone wants to keep track and tell us what you know we did in terms of our lives, that would be great. But yeah, good thing we weren't playing this in the arcade because it would have cost a lot of money. So, but yeah, Baxter was kicking our butts. I think I died like three or four times, and Bob, you were doing better at this point. You only died a couple, so yeah, that's that's good. Hopefully we'll kill him soon. I don't know exactly how long it takes, but he's not flashing very quickly yet. So. Oh, oh, there you go. But yeah, but then he fell. That's weird. And then we get the nice high five. Cowabunga. Cowabunga. All right, and now we're moving on to scene two. And of course, the kind of the big thing about this game is that you end up traveling. Whoa. <laughs> You can throw foot soldiers, that's kind of cool. Obviously the slam there, that's cool too. And what's neat about it is it's an instant death, so if you can actually catch one of the Foot Clan in that, you'll kill them right away, and then you can throw them into the screen too, which is awesome. And I think I actually fall through 
Yeah, I'm, I'm dumb sometimes, but that's okay. And we'll get our pizza here and stupid... Yeah, there's some sort of boxing robot that I don't remember ever being in the game, and he kind of kicked our butts a little bit too. Yeah, and there's a palette swap of them later too with like blue gloves. And they added a lot more elements in the environments too that you can use to attack. So like the cones, the parking meters, we have these little construction signs. So that's kind of cool. And once in a while I'm getting the uh, shoulder rush here to work, but that's kind of hard to pull off too. But we're doing okay. And it's unfortunate we're not able to see our score, so we don't know how many actual foot soldiers we're killing. And again, if any of you are super hardcore, you can count up the number of foot soldiers that we each kill and let us know. But here's a new power up. Yeah, we were a little weary of this at first. Uh, we weren't quite sure if it was a trap pizza or if it would be something helpful, being a super move of sorts that kind of got wasted, but now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Yeah, that's that's the way it goes. No, that's fine. <laughs> but now we got the second boss, this robotic turtle. I, I vaguely remember this guy from the cartoon, um, but I don't remember him that much. Um, a lot of these bosses, again, vague memory. I watched the cartoon a lot as a kid. I was really into turtles, but... Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've actually watched it or done anything with these games, so Yeah, it's it's weird. He's kicking our butt too. We still haven't gotten our uh, our surround strategy going and this guy, He is just whipping out these crazy ass moves Throwing shit at us. He's got missiles. He's laughing at us. He's like trolling us ridiculous uh, Luckily we have that pizza on the screen although You'd think I'd use it, but no. I die. That's too yeah, bad. I think here at some point we figure out the whole pincer move strategy. Whoa. Whoa. Just bust out some lasers. Yeah. Where that freaking laser came from, nobody knows, but... Whoa. Oh. Oh, man. He died. Yeah. <laughs> In an explosion, of course. I really wanted them to miss this high five at some point, but no, they, they successfully do it each time. And now, instead of skateboards... We're on surfboards? Yeah, of sorts. It, sort of, yeah. yeah. I don't know how we're surfing in the sewer, but whatever. And we get the classic My Toes line if you hit these uh, mines that are coming up. And uh, we're starting to get some new kind of palette swaps of the Foot Clan, which includes... Whoa! And I get, I get hit by that thing every single time. Just couldn't avoid it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It just drops down kind of out of nowhere, so... Uh, and we're, we're not good at these. Well, I guess we, we avoided them that time. But we start to see these soldiers that are using shields, so... Uh, and swords. Yeah, and swords, so... Yeah, they're they're kicking stuff up a notch a little bit here. Um, and you kind of got to use... Oh! <laughs> now we, we're both. Twice. My yeah. toes. My toes. And so you got to use your special moves to kind of break through those shields and... They're starting to use these weapons, throwing shit at us and stuff like that, so ow, yeah. And then aliens, aliens yep. yeah, straight, jumping out. Straight from the movie. Pretty much, yeah, they, they pretty much ripped that right out of the movie. There's a couple elements of that in this game where they're just ripping stuff off of other franchises. We're gonna get to a level later in the future that looks a lot like freaking Back to the Future, so... We'll, we'll get to that when we when we do that. But, yes, we're, we're recording this because uh, my cousin Bob is visiting this weekend. Uh, he came by to visit my wife and I, and so we figured that was a great opportunity to kind of play some games that we remembered from our childhood that we had played a lot. Uh, Bob and I grew up together and, uh, for all intents and purposes, grew up as kind of brothers, and so we spent a lot of time together, especially during the summer. Um, and so we played a lot of Super Nintendo together, and we also played a lot of Nintendo 64 together with uh, one of our neighbors who actually worked uh, with my dad. Um, and so this was one of the games we played. We played a lot of uh, Mario Kart. Army Men on 64. Yeah, our, our game on the Nintendo 64 we ended up playing the most was freaking Army Men for whatever reason. Not one of the classics, but for us it was a lot of fun. And we did the multiplayer. That was our kind of our golden eye or perfect dark. 
where we played and fought each other and killed each other a bunch, and we played as army men instead of, you know, James Bond or super spies or anything like that. And these stupid aliens coming at us. Pretty ridiculous. Coming all over the place. Slashing at our heads. Crazy. And Secret of Mana, interestingly enough. Yes, we played that last night, actually. Uh, one of my favorite games, multiplayer. And probably one of John's more frustrating games ever playing with me. Because uh, I would always play this little, if you're familiar with it, the little impish creature with red hair because, well, I happen to have red hair as well. And I would always run around in the opposite direction, get stuck on things, and really slow down the process. But I was quite effective with the spear, and yeah, that was my role, just being annoying pretty much. And that's fine. It's endearing for you to be annoying. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was something we did last night. We played a little bit of Secret of Mana on Virtual Console, and we actually got up to the point where we unlocked both of the other characters, the princess and, and the imp. So that was a very exciting time when we finally unlocked the imp and Bob was able to play as the imp again so uh, but you were kicking ass last night man you were taking out everything with that spear yep, leveling up real quick yeah and uh, we didn't quite get to bosses or anything we were just running around we got to the guy as naval part of the game for those of you that have played it but did the screen just get darker yeah yeah it did I think we're inside a cave so right. yeah I got it yeah so you know, realism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Along with these rock like creatures. <laughs> I know. Massive in, sledgehammer. Yes. In this prehistoric time that we're now fighting in, because Shredder and Velocity. And Velociraptors that spit fire. <laughs> <laughs> Little golden axe action here. Yeah, because Shredder apparently the whole time had the power to send us back in time with his uh, mental beam through his uh, helmet or whatever the hell it was. Uh, but I definitely, for credits here, you. And now, this really weird boss. Yeah, used to be, uh, what was his name, Slash? Yeah, the other turtle named Slash, and that was a SNES change. Uh, apparently the boss was this, I don't know, mud creature or whatever the heck it is. Uh, it's white, so I don't know if that's mud or what's going on with that, but I hope it's mud. Yeah, we're not going to go there what other materials <laughs> it might be. We'll, we'll just go with mud. Yeah, but uh, he throws these uh, mud things at us and locks us down, and we still don't quite... We're, we're working on it. We're getting the pincer kind of working here. Uh, it, it gets perfected as the game goes on, but yeah. It used to be Slash, and he was one of the harder bosses, actually, in the game, I remember. Like, he would kick your butt. He was super fast, and... He would throw shit at you, and yeah, it was pretty, pretty intense. But we're getting beat down pretty bad here. I, I just wonder, I was going back in time stuff. Like, what did we affect in the present? You know, I mean, think about it. <laughs> yeah, a little butterfly effect. Did killing this mud monster cause you know JFK to not get assassinated or you know what what exactly of an impact did it have on the current world uh, then you know we skip a couple of years and jump to the 1500s which makes sense you know, just around the corner you know and dinosaurs and pirates that's pretty much all of human history trust me I'm a history teacher <laughs> <laughs> And then we forgot about these stupid planks in the deck, and Bob hit one there, and it smacked into his face. But same enemies! I, I guess they can travel through time, too. But at least they're changing stuff up, it's not... Ow. Oh, we have fire arrows. Yeah, those aren't good. And fireworks, instead of the barrels that just randomly explode. But they still have machine guns and rocket launchers. Yes, rock-like creatures with rocket launchers. That, yep. Bombs. And bombs. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's fairly typical for pirates. They did have little grenade-like weapons that they would hurl on board, so being somewhat historically accurate. Right? As long as it gets your seal of approval as a history teacher. How about these uh, discs that they're throwing around? Like, Yeah, I'm not quite sure what those are. I think they changed them to boomerangs in the, the SNES version, so... That's good. They're really freaking annoying though, because they're, they're super comeback. They just, you know, and even if you kill the guy, it, it still comes back and gets you. So. 
Oh. Like that effect when they hit you with a fire arrow, it like burns your face like that. It's very whoa. Yeah, these guys, they use it as a melee weapon too. Now we played some Dead Nation 2 today, and uh, I had not really gotten far in that game. That's one of those games for those of you that remembered uh, a little while ago when PSN got hacked and uh, Sony as a way of saying uh, we're sorry for having poor security and losing all of your credit card information. Oh, and Splinter's telling us to get our butts moving. Yeah, Splinter for whatever reason can just come in any of these ages and just show up and tell us to hurry. But we got Razor and Toka here, a couple baddies from the second Turtles movie. And we actually do fairly well against them and this frickin' lightning effect. A little distracting. One of my favorite lines from the turtle movies came from these two, and they were tricked into eating that uh, potion to make them smaller, and they were like, nom noms. And I don't know. That's just something that stuck with me through the years. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I. One of the things that's most memorable to me is that Kevin Nash, the wrestler, played Super Shredder in the second movie. I'm not sure if you were. I was not aware of that. Yeah, yeah, that was his big acting debut was to be a covered up Super Shredder in, mm -hmm. in the second movie. I think that's accurate. That's kind of what I've always heard. Super Shredder really was not effective when you think about it. I mean, he was this big jacked up super thing that probably could have tore the turtles right out of their shells and then he just decides to bring down a pier upon himself and not quite sure what the thought process was there I guess stay off of the steroids kids <laughs> yeah that's the message I think the moral of the story stay away from those performance enhancing drugs and as a Brewers fan I can tell you with the recent issues with Ryan Braun yeah we really oh and poor poor Toka there turned into a little turtle you don't want to get involved in that stuff because it's it's bad news. But now we're gonna head, of course, we go from Glee to you know the 1800s. And when I was a kid, I probably didn't understand the significance of that title, "Bury My Shell at Wounded Knee." Now that I think about it, it's probably a little offensive for you know all the people that died there. But whatever. <laughs> Yeah, stereotypes and offensive things. You know, this is early 90s that this game was made. 91, I think, so, yeah. I'm just surprised that they don't have any, like, Native Americans helping the foot soldiers to kill the turtles, because obviously they would. <laughs> In a game like this, they would, yeah. Um, you would expect if it was really happening, they would maybe help the turtles. The Native Americans? Yeah, maybe. Oh, for being stereotypical. Oh, yeah, yeah. Native Americans are evil. Stereotype, yeah. And all those westerns and things like that. Like how he rides up on the frickin' horse, and it looks like the horse's makeup on, too. It's very weird. And then this clown car, what the hell's going on with that? Yeah. They're, they're smacking us around here. And it's, yeah, and... You'll notice that uh, Bob is actually on slot 3, and that's because when we're playing this on the Wii, actually, with GameCube controllers, <laughs> that guy's hiding back there. Ooh! Yep. Fooled us. Yeah, we had no idea who that was. Uh, but depending on what slot you put your controller in determines what turtle you are. So, uh, you know, Michelangelo, I think, was slot 2. Well, the colors are up there. So the 2 up, 3 up, 4 up. It, the color determines the turtle, so Donatello was three there and Raphael was four. And you had to think about that quite a bit. You were going to go with Raph, he's your favorite, but then you went with the Reach. Strategy-wise, made sense. It was a difficult decision. Literally, we were sitting here for probably three minutes. And John was just looking at me and realizing how weird I really am. Yeah, you're a little weird, but it's it's endearing. You know, it's it's a positive thing. We're all weird in our own way, so. Speaking of, you know, weird, I'll tell you a turtle story that was from my childhood. So I was big into the turtles, and also, you know, being an inquisitive little kid, you know, you always test out random things, and one of the things I had was a magnet. And, uh, you know, you try and stick magnets to whatever, find out what they'll stick to, you know. Typically metal, but you're not sure what's always metal these days, so I would, uh, well, one day I stuck it to our TV set, the screen, and the TV did not like that. And so the colors of the TV were all screwed up then for a few, I'd say about a month. And it was terrible watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because I really couldn't tell who was who. 
unless they were actually like fighting or you know maybe having long dialogue or something but it's one of the more traumatic uh, periods in my life I would say. I mean, it still sticks with you to this day, it sounds like. No, I, I remember. I put that magnet on, and the colors went, and, and like, the colors were there, but it was like watching in Rainbow Vision or something, and just couldn't tell who was who. Well, and that was kind of something that, that first happened. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, too. Like, the original comic that created the Turtles, as we take out another stage here, that alligator really didn't do much to us. And then this random pan, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Very, very weird. But I think now we go to the future. Yeah, so now we're blasting all the way to the futuristic time of 2020. 2020. And let's see, this is about seven years away now. Less than seven years, I guess. And look at the advances the human race will make in that short amount of time. Pretty freaking amazing. We're gonna have hovercrafts, we're gonna have futuristic lights in cities just flashing into the sky. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, Back to the Future type stuff. Obviously, the hoverboard. That I, can't, I can't wait to get a personal helicopter with a Gatling gun on it. Oh, that, that'll be pretty sweet. Yeah, I wonder when those will go on the market. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. And they're not apparently doing construction anymore. Apparently the president of this time has just taken all of the budget out of uh, maintenance of, ma of highways because these roads are in just terrible condition. These massive holes like this. That's why we had to go to hovercraft. You know, then you don't have to pay for roads, obviously. Yeah, so everyone's just hovering then, so I guess that works out. You gotta grab the... We missed all of the pizza. Maybe we got one. There's about five pizzas there. <laughs> yeah, well, we're at full health, so yeah, I think even if we went over it... It wouldn't have mattered too much. I don't think this level... Does it have a boss? Mm, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember if it has a boss or not. Uh, it might... Actually, I think it's Krang, maybe. Uh, Krang flying in his, yeah, his big suit, I think. Um, and you actually fight Krang a couple times, I think, in this kind of leading up to the end of the game, so... Yeah, so we're now we're in the future. We've gone past the, these one-way streets, and... The, yeah, there's those boxing robots again, and this time they jump. <laughs> and they're kicking our ass, too. They're just wailing on us like Mike Tyson would. For those of you that have seen my Punch-Out replay, man, Mr. Dream holds nothing on these damn boxing robots. They're terrible. But yeah, I would love to have one of those helicopters. That would be pretty cool. All right, so we're... Doing okay here. We're, there's only a couple more levels left, not a ton. You were going to say something about the comic books and the colors of the turtles? Uh, yes, yeah. So in the original comics, the, the turtles did not have different colors. They were all red. So they all wore red bandanas. They all wore red, uh, all the different colored like uh, things around their knees and stuff. And here comes Krang in the background. Um, and so the only way you could tell the difference between them was based on their weapons. Um, but then when they made the cartoon series, they assumed kids are dumb. They're not going to know the difference based just on the weapons, and there's a lot more dialogue. So then they actually changed the colors of everything so that you could tell them apart. So, let's see. Yeah. So if you actually, you know, recently in our Novell vs. Johnny challenge series Novell played the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES which is a brutal brutal game and if you look at the front cover of that box they're actually all wearing red and that's not a mistake that's actually taken I think directly from one of the first comic books um, which were actually in black and white so I mean you couldn't even really see it in the comic anyway so I think that's why they didn't really have it be different. I'd just like to point out that while Crane's really kicking your butt, I'm just beating the hell out of him from behind there. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking it for the team, and then, and then he turns around and starts wailing on you, but yeah, yeah, we're, we're struggling with Crane here a little bit. And he's, he's not too bad, but I'm confused by his in the beginning, wasn't he big enough to grab the Statue of Liberty and fly away? And now he's really tiny. Yeah, that's weird. Not sure what's going on with that. I'm all about consistency in my video games and you know, realism. And so. Yeah, and playing a game about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we want realism. And now he's running away on his little platform there. And if 2020 isn't enough, now we're going to go to the way into the future where no turtle has gone before, I believe is the name of the stage. 
And that is 2100. Yeah, so we're not even Star Trek time. I think Star Trek was like 2300 or so, maybe 24. But now we're starting to get these really stupid robots that can... Yeah, they bind you and I don't know, whatever you're saying when they get bound up. I don't know. Some, some like my toes, but I can't move maybe. Yeah, at this point the sound acting is getting kind of bad. You can't really tell what the turtles are saying. And it gets worse because there's a fight coming up with Crane where he puts you in these bubbles and... <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like, what, what did I say, take a mint or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something, you know? something like, do you have a mint or something? He's, he's being really polite, actually, for <laughs> trying to kill us, so. But we, we see the, the technology here, being able to transport enemies in. Uh, obviously, in probably like 50 years, we'll look at this and think how camp it is and stuff like that, just like we are with the 2020. But I guess we're on Mars here? There's a star base around Mars, it looks like. And... UNCC, is that what that says in the background? I don't know what that might stand for. United Nations, maybe. Something like that. But we're still seeing the same types of enemies, I guess, in the hundred years. The Foot Clan hasn't changed much. Or I guess the way you look at it, it's the same Foot Clan. They're just coming through time with us, too. But, yeah. Now, they actually, unfortunately, took out the kind of cool final boss that was added to the Super Nintendo version. So for those of you that have played the Super version, there was this final fight with uh, Shredder where he's in like this mechanical being in front of a big screen and you have to throw foot soldiers at him and that's not in this version unfortunately. The last, oh and now this frozen ice thing, watch I'll get, yep, I can barely get out of this one. Not, no, not good at all. <laughs> Just embarrassing. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Fortunately, oh, and then bouncing balls are in the future as well. Uh, what was that movie where there was like that giant white orb that rose up and like went and engulfed people? Hmm. Yeah, Simpsons did a parody of it with Mole Man. Yeah. Remember, Homer was escaping the cult and then the orb comes out and comes after him. I'm not sure, yeah. I, I know the Simpsons episode you're talking about and actually Bob allowed me to get the power up there, which was nice of him. He didn't steal it like he usually does, but... Yeah, no, I, I remember. The, I don't know the actual movie. So if any of you viewers know what movie that is, that would be great. Let us know in the comments. We would love to know that. But now we have more electric beams here, so that's fantastic. Um, yep, we get hit by one of those discs coming back. Well, of course, we get hit by the discs. They are ridiculous. But now we're in front of the big screen, so that means we're almost at the end here. We just have the last two bosses. We have Krang again and his uh, hovercraft here dropping down these stupid enemies. and. Now he's going to start using the and then Shredder gloating over us in the background, lording it up. I don't know what he's doing. He almost looks like Kevin from Home Alone, you know, kind of the, oh my god, I'm home alone, ah, kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> but we need to take out Krang here, and he's got these stupid bubbles, and that, that's the mint line right there. Still not sure what he's saying, but if you guys can figure it out, let us know. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to know that, but they look very silly in the bubbles there. They look like stuffed animals, but yeah, Krang doesn't do much here. He just puts you in that, he drops his little bad guys, and every once in a while he'll go up higher and make it more difficult to get to him, but he's still kicking our asses a little bit. My ass more than Bob's. Bob's got four lives here. I'm sure he's hitting the button to give himself credits just to stay ahead of me, but you never know. Yeah, usually I just flee and let John do most of the work and then jump in at the end. Take the credit, yeah. The, the decisive blow. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you're the glory hog, but that's okay. Again, endearing, you know, you're an endearing guy. You know, traits about you. But Krang, he's turning red there, so my guess is he's almost dead. And then once he's dead, we'll finally be able to take on the final boss, which is, of course, Shredder. And unlike the arcade game, which I've done previously, there's no credits or anything in this. So once we beat it, it just basically starts all over. So if you really want to continue, you can continue to just get your turtle turtle fix out of playing this game over and over again. Although myself, my hand was pretty sore after playing this about even just a half hour. But there goes Krang. So that means it's on to the big boss. Yep, here comes Shredder. And we actually end up going back to the present, which is uh, 1991, I guess, which is when 
<laughs> this game was. So the Technodrome, the final shell shock, and there is the prize, the Statue of Liberty, that most precious United States landmark that has led to this massive journey. And I think, too, in the Super Nintendo version, he was actually Super Shredder here, so he was more... Uh, that would have made would have been more true to the story if you would have like tried to pick up the Statue of Liberty and throw it at us, but then it fell on him. Yeah, that, that would be a good way to end a video game. I feel get to the final boss and he just kills himself. <laughs> it would <laughs> complete lack of <laughs> you know suspense yeah. or yeah. anticlimactic yeah. in that way. And he's got that Hadouken hands that he throws at us for whatever reason. But yeah, his sprite's a little bit different here than in the SNES version, and so it's kind of weird. And he's a pain, like he is blocking shit, and he is just, again, kicking our butts with whatever lightsaber, I guess, he's got there. He's, he's parrying a lot, I mean, he must do fencing in his free time or something, I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, I can, I can see Shredder fencing, maybe with Krang or something like that, yeah. <laughs> Leonardo Lang sprawled on his back with the stars around his head. But you're getting kind of low on life there. But yeah, I think we, we do a good job of keeping track of that sort of stuff, making sure we have enough credits. And I really like that it's not the Cowabunga. It's not as obnoxious as the arcade, the other arcade game. So that just got tiresome when I was playing that game. But yeah, this is going to be it. Once we beat Shredder, that'll be the end of the game, and, and we'll be done with this. And it's probably coming up here soon. So what are your, your kind of final thoughts after having kind of taken this trip down memory lane? Oh, it was, it was good. Like I said, it, this was different because it wasn't quite like the SNES version. So uh, it was just early on, getting back into the swing of playing these kind of games. Obviously a little rusty, but... If we went back again, it'd be much more effective, I'm sure. I know at one point when we were playing the SNES version, like, we used to play on, like, max lives and stuff like that, because you could, like, increase your lives and continues and stuff, but I think we had gotten it to a point where we could beat the whole game in, like, 20 minutes or 15, and, like, we were playing with, like, the basic default, like, three lives, like, three continues, and we weren't even having to, like, use continues, so we had this game pretty much down, like... Yeah, I just remember being able to really throw... Like, we got good at throwing people. Because like, that's the easiest way to kill them. You just grab them and throw them off the screen. And, yeah, I don't know, is it like two taps towards them and grab them and throw them? Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's very finicky. It's not exactly clear, and Shredder obviously is still still going strong here, <laughs> throwing his freaking hand Hadoukens at us and nailing us with his lightsaber and floating and flying and stuff like that. I do miss the final battle though. I thought that was a cool element of the SNES version and I am dying way more. Donnie's using his brain. He's running away like he should and oh and there goes Shredder. So that is all for Turtles in Time. Thank you for joining us as we get the statue. There's April O'Neil still foxy as ever. Yeah. And the little kid doing the photo bomb. So thank you everyone for watching and uh, thank you for joining us for this video and I'll see y'all next time. So I want to say goodbye. Bye all. Goodbye. <laughs>